welcome to the library corner. Here we are again, back in the, the library. library corner. Yep. So this is my friend, Mrs. Zimmer, and um, she and I work together. So I thought I would drag her in and ask her to come and talk about some books. And um, I actually, I work for her and I'm a librarian and she is a librarian. She used to be the librarian at Central High School. Central High School, and then she moved on to be the assistant principal at Central, and then she now she's with we're together at Strong Vincent, um, and I kind of travel around. So that's kind of a little information about the two of us. And um, today's book is and I have two of them out here because we have so many of them. But today's book is the book with no pictures. And it's written by B.J. Novak. And obviously there's no illustrator because it's a book with no pictures. Um, and so B.J. Novak, do you know, have you ever heard that name before? He um, was one of the writers for The Office, which was on NBC. And he was also one of the actors on that show. And so he wrote this book. And um, have you ever read a book with no pictures? Well, I think I have. I think I've read lots of chapter books. Ah, yes, chapter books. Sometimes, a lot of times, chapter books do not have pictures. So, where do you usually get those pictures from? Ms. Trapshow to the main office, please. Ms. Trapshow to the main office, please. Oh, dear. Seems you're being paged. Oh, dear. Um, well, do you think that you could read the book with no pictures? Uh-oh. Um, well, I haven't read it before, but I, I could give it a try. Um, would you... Would you like it if I if I sent my assistant in? Oh. My assistant Augie. You have an assistant? I do. I didn't tell you about Augie, but hmm. um, yes, I have an assistant named Augie. And do you think that you know maybe the two of you could or you know? Okay. okay. I'll make Augie read all the big words. Oh, okay. 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 Um, well, then I'm going to go to the office, and here's the book. Okay. And uh, I'll find out what they're asking me for, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. I'll all see right. you soon. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, well, I wonder where Mrs. Drapshow went. And I don't know who her friend Augie is. Has she ever told you guys about Augie, her assistant? Hello! Hello! I am Augie! Well, hello, Augie. How are you? I'm good. I'm her assistant, Augie! Well, Augie, well, thanks for joining us. Why You're welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Augie. I am Ms. Drapshow's assistant. So what do you do for Ms. Drap Show? Oh, all kinds of stuff, especially make tea. <laughs> she loves tea. Is she nice? Yeah, she's nice. She lets us read whatever we want to read. Oh, I bet she has a lot of books to read. She does. She, she always does. has the best new books, doesn't she? She does. She gets them hot off the press. Mm. And she's so knowledgeable. What's the last book you read, Augie? Hmm, let me think. Like, did you read her last book, Lester's Dreadful Sweater? Oh! Speaking of, yes, we read that. <laughs> and did you see her sweater that day? I know, she said it wasn't dreadful, but it was dreadful. <laughs> it was dreadful. <laughs> It was okay, worse buddy. than my haircut. <laughs> well, she better not hear us talking about this. She's going to get mad. Shh, don't tell her. No, she won't get mad. She said, Augie, did you see my sweater? It was more dreadful than anything that Lester had. Oh, uh, well, you know, Cousin Clara, she can make a mean sweater. Maybe Cousin Clara made Miss Drapshow's sweater. Maybe. Cousin Clara, do you remember what that was? Cousin Clara. Remember? Cousin Clara's cottage that? was eaten by a crocodile. Ooh. What is that? Do you remember? Mm, do you remember what that's called? What alliteration. You, alliteration. Very good. You guys learned Thanks. about alliteration last time. Thanks. Augie, you're so smart. Barb, you're, you're bodacious. <laughs> that's alliteration. <laughs> Oh, Augie. All right. Well, hey, today we're going to read a book called The Book with No Pictures. What? What? And Ms. Drapshow said you could help. She said you know how to read big words. She did? She, she did. said that I, Augie, could help read the book? She did. 
Oh, I am so honored. <laughs> All right, so we're going to read The Book With No Pictures by okay. B.J. Novak. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. I'm honored. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Okay, let's read. All right. This All is, right. This is a book with no pictures. Oh. It might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. Hmm, a little bit. It probably seems boring <laughs> and serious. Except... Here is how the book works. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say. <laughs> no matter what. You ready? That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say... Bork! Wait, what? That doesn't mean anything. Yes! Wait a second. What? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says? Uh-oh. I am a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. <laughs> and now I am reading you this book with my monkey mouth. In my monkey voice! <laughs> That's not true. I'm not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey! Also, I am a robot <laughs> monkey. What? And my head is made of blueberry pizza! <laughs> Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading, please? No. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a... Glug, 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 my face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. <laughs> This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No. There are more pages? I have to read the rest? My only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo <laughs> Butt. Boo Boo Butt. And also, the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? And, and, and this kid is the smartest kid too because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures. Because kids no, this book is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things. <laughs> and make silly sounds like... <clears throat> oh no, here it comes. Go make me read this book again. It's so silly. In fact, it is completely and utterly preposterous. I know what that would mean. Next time, please, 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 please choose a book with pictures. Please,
because this is just too ridiculous to read. The end. Bonk. I don't want to say that. Wow, Augie, you were a very good reader. Thanks, Barb. Yeah, you you know all the big words. How do you know those? Well, they were just big on the page. They weren't really big. But I did know what preposterous meant. You did? Mm-hmm. How do you know what preposterous meant? Well, when I'm reading, Miss Drapshow told me that if I don't know a word, to look it up in the... Dictionary. Dictionary. Yep. Very good. Yep. That's a big book, a dictionary. Mm -hmm. Do you know where you can find a dictionary? Uh, yeah, it was on like a thing, a stand, and it was in the library, and she pointed it out. And yeah, you're right. Every library has a dictionary stand. Every library? Every library. No. Yes. No. And there's two other places you can find a dictionary in the library. Do you know where what? that is? No. No. Well, dictionaries are found in the nonfiction section. Do you know the, you know what nonfiction means? Um, it means not something, fiction, mm, not, not fiction. fiction. Well, what are fiction books? Do you remember fiction mm, books? Fiction books are fun. I like to read them. Yes. Sometimes the stories are true. Right. Sometimes, usually, they're not true, and it's about kids, and I really like them a lot. Well, you're right. Fiction books, if if they could be based on a true story, but usually there's something made up about them in fiction books. Yeah. But, yeah, because if yeah. they were true, we would find them in... Some would be so sad. Nonfiction. Yes, they would be sad. What? They would be sad. So fiction books are stories that are made up, and just what you described. They're about kids and places and fun stories. But nonfiction, those are... What are they? Do you know? Hmm. They are not made up stories. Correct. <gasps> Correct. <gasps> oh, Very good. I am so proud of that. So you could have nonfiction books about lots of different things. Like what do you said that you like to eat bugs. I do like to eat bugs. Off the rug, you said. I do like to eat bugs off the rug. Sometimes I like them on toast. Ooh. Mmm. Mm. You're not reading your book when you're eating your bugs on your toast, are you? No. Miss Drapshow said no reading and eating. Yes, I know. Because what happens? Well, sometimes bugs fall out of my mouth. <laughs> and that could get on the book. Because sometimes yes. I chew them and I get excited. Right. And then it's like, hey, you guys, this was a really big bug and it was good. And then it falls out. And, oh. and we don't want any bugs on the pages of the books, do we? No. No. Because not everybody likes bugs. No. Sorry, Augie. It's true. Oh. Well, anyways, okay. So if we're going to find the dictionaries in the nonfiction section, they're in the 423s. What? Yeah. The okay. nonfiction sections are set up by numbers. Oh. It's like an okay. address for a book. Oh, an address? Yeah. You know how, like, you live at a particular address? Do you want to know it? Do you want to know it? No, you better, oh. not, you better not tell the boys and girls. They will come over to your house and bug you. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. But everybody has an address, and then that's way, the way that the postman knows where to bring your mail, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. the library... Mm -hmm. Columbia House just brought me some new tapes. Really? Mm. Wow. I, they still do that, huh? Yep. <laughs> so... Every book has an address, and that's the call number. Oh. And so the library's call number is, or the dictionary's call number is 423. Got it. Okay. Now, the third place you can find a dictionary. Oh, my goodness. This is a lot. I know it is a lot. Oh, is the reference section. What? Have you ever heard of the reference section? No. Well, every library has a reference section. What? Yep. The reference section is made up of books that are generally pretty expensive. And we need those books in the library because you can't check them out. Oh, you mean like $10? Well, they're probably a little more expensive than that. Like what? Oh, like hundreds of dollars. What? Hundreds of dollars worth of books in a library? Oh, yes. Sometimes, For one book? Sometimes thousands of oh, dollars. Oh, my goodness. That's why we have to take such good care of our books. Yeah. But in the reference section, we have books that don't circulate, which means nobody gets to check them out. Oh, uh, why is that? What if I need it? What if I want to take it home? Well, there's a couple reasons why. The first one is, if you were doing a report, 
you need to make sure that there's always a book about your subject in the library. And if nobody ever gets to take out the reference books, then those subjects are always there in the library waiting for you. Hey, that's a really good idea. I know. Librarians are pretty smart, aren't they? You are. Yeah. And then the second reason is because the books are very expensive and we don't want them signed out because if you lost one, it would be very expensive to replace. My mother would really be mad. Yes, I think she would. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'd probably be grounded for a really long time. You probably would. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. I'm glad. I'll never take a book out. So those are the places that you can find a dictionary in the library. Wow, that was very, very informative. Thank you. You Boy, are welcome, Augie. It was a good thing you came today. I know. Augie, are you going to come back again someday? Yeah, are you? Uh, I guess, if, if Ms. Right. Drapshow Show invites me. She will. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a bug in her ear. You will. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now, I heard that you might have some friends that might want to join us. <gasps> How do you know well, these things? Well, you know, you, you told me a little secret before. Oh, yeah, did remember? she tell you anything about me? Because oh. I do have friends. You do? Yep. There's a girl, and her name is Daisy. Daisy. And there's Edgar. Edgar. And um, there are a couple of new kids. I don't know what their names are. And then, oh, gee. <laughs> I don't know if I want to tell you. What's her There's name? There's a girl. Her name is... Violet. Yeah. <laughs> you like a girl oh, named Violet? She's the bee's knees. She is. She's beautiful. Aww. Don't tell her. Please don't tell her. Okay, Augie. I won't tell her. Okay, thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks. I really like her. So if you come next okay. time, maybe you could meet <gasps> Violet. Oh, well, I look forward to meeting Violet. Oh, I, I get my... Sometimes... I can't talk <laughs> around her. Aw. Well, Augie, what book would you like Ms. Drap Show to read next time? Mm, if we could read a book together, maybe we could read... The Pigeon. <gasps> My favorite book! <gasps> Yay! Don't let the pigeon Yay! drive the bus! Yay! Yay! I love that book! I okay. love it! Okay. What, you know, last time Ms. Drapshaw was telling us about um, fiction books that she liked, and I read her book, um, They Were Liars, and it was really good. No! Oh, Ms. Drapshaw yeah, knows really yeah, good books. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was like All one right. of the best books ever. Okay, well, next time then, oh, well, you better talk her into letting me come back so we can read Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Yeah, yeah, it's like I will. One of my I will. favorites. I will. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Well, hey, Augie, high five. Thanks for coming in. It was great having you here. Me, I loved it. I'm so glad I got to do this. Okay. Yay. Uh, you know, it's kind of crowded in that trunk. Is it? Yeah, she yeah. keeps us in a suitcase, so, <laughs> yeah. Does she feed you? Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah? Lots of bugs? Yeah, lots of bugs. Lots of bugs. Okay, yeah. good. All right. All well, right. bye. Bye, bye Barbie. I'll bye. see you soon. All right, okay, okay. bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Boys and girls, I think okay. I hear Miss Draft Show. Thanks, Augie. Thank you. I'm sure you did a good job. Hi, how are you? Hello, Miss Trap Show. How glad did the reading to, go? Glad to have you back. Well, oh, thanks. It's good to Augie, be back. Augie, what a good reader he is. My Augie is a good reader. He knew all the big words. Oh, like press the digitator? Uh, I don't think that one came up. Oh, he didn't know press the digitator. No, he okay. didn't know that one. Um, all right, well. Then we shall move along. If I'm glad, that, I'm glad to hear that he did a good job. He did. And uh, you can tell he reads a lot at home. He does. He yeah. does. He's a good boy. Yes. Um, so then, you know, maybe we can pull him in later on. Maybe we can have him come to do a couple more shows or something. That would be a lot of fun. Kay. He said that he has other friends that he could bring along as well. He does. He does. Yeah. I have a number of um, uh, kids that can help me. Um, I think there are six. Really? Yeah, we did a little <laughs> casting call and there were a couple of people that showed up, so. He seemed to really like Violet. Oh, 
that's kind of a secret. I don't know. Oh, what. Well, he told all the boys and girls out there about he Violet. Did? Yes, oh, he did. Oh, well, we'll try and keep that a secret. Okay. Um, so speaking of secrets, mm -hmm. um, I have some books. These are for the high school kids. We're in our, we are in our book talk segment. And um, one of them is 13 Reasons Why. And this book, 13 Reasons Why, by Jay Asher, is hot, hot, hot. Um, it is about 13 reasons why a young girl committed suicide. And um, one morning, a, a boy wakes up and he finds a package on his step. And in it are um, 12 tapes, 12 uh, cassette tapes. And they are from a girl named Hannah. And this book is so hot. It, is, it has been translated into many languages, um, Hungarian, Czech. I had to write them all down in the back. Um, Israeli. It, it's been um, in Italian. It's gone to Canada, France, Germany. And um, Hannah sends out these tapes as mm -hmm. to why she committed suicide. And what in the, the 12 tapes are the 12 people. And there's... Oh. Um, and then there, there are actually 13 reasons why she committed suicide. And it's about bullying. And oh. it's a very sad book. It takes your breath away, this book. Hmm. And um, it is so hot that it is a new movie. It's coming out oh. soon. Okay. And uh, Hannah is played by Selena Gomez. Have you heard oh, of her? I have heard of Selena Gomez. Yeah. I believe my daughter just read that for a book report. 13 Reasons Why? She did. Did she comment on it? Did she She say? liked it very much. Did she? She did. Good. Yes. Good. Um, she said it's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. but she's looking forward to the movie. Yeah. 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 Well, great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so that was 13 Reasons Why. And then I also have this book, which is called Shipbreaker. And the author, Paolo Bacigalupi, Paolo Bechigalupi, that's a very hard name to say. Better you than I. <laughs> <laughs> that could be our word of the day. Um, this is a um, this is a futuristic book uh, of the uh, in America, the Gulf region, which is the area around the Gulf of New Mexico, which is mainly this book is set in Louisiana. And um, do you know what comes out of the Gulf Coast region besides seafood? Uh, oil? Yes. Oil. Oh, yay. <laughs> so um, we are. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, a lot of tankers mm. are grounded and the shipbreakers go and they, they take the copper and iron off of the ships from the ship parts. And um, it's, um, it's a dystopian novel uh, set in the future. And our main character is Nailer. And his father is a very bad man, Richard. He's very, very bad. And um, Naylor uh, meets a young girl. He finds a young girl. She is running from men who are trying to um, kidnap her and hold her for ransom. Her father is very, very wealthy. And um, Naylor's father and uncle are a part of that. And uh, so the story follows their kind of journey through the Gulf Coast and um, well does she make it or doesn't she does her father get to her in time do his and it's kind of like there are different factions who are working for each other and um, so it's kind of a dismal look at our future and of what how dependent we are on oil hmm, interesting mm-hmm sort sounds of sounds good do you remember any of the other dystopian novels that are very uh, um, popular right now. Well, I would say that if the kids liked The Hunger Games, they would probably like that book. Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm glad you glad you thought of that. Um, and then my last book is Funny Little Monkey. And um, this book is by Andrew Awesome. And, um, and it is awesome. Uh, Funny Little Monkey is about a little guy named Artie. Mm -hmm. And Artie is about four foot six. And his twin brother is a hulking, huge six foot. And they're twins. And obviously they're fraternal. And um, Augie is usually the punching bag for his brother. They are uh, boys brought up by a single parent. And um, Augie, I mean, high school's hard enough. And here Augie has to go into it, and he's four foot six. And his brother is, you know, this big beast of a six footer. And um, 
Augie's secret weapon is his brain. He's unbelievably smart. Mm. And so Augie kind of gets in with a, an underground smart group of kids. And they take revenge on Augie's brother. And it comes, it's a, it comes to a point where Augie has to make a decision about his brother and how far he is going to allow things to happen to his brother who doesn't, it's sort of a brains over brawn, brawn over brains kind of hmm. situation that they're in. It sounds very interesting. Yeah, it is. And so <laughs> um, this, the, these three books are very, very good books. They were heralded as ALA best books for the year that they were um, or for the years that they came out. Mm -hmm. So they were ALA, American Library Association Best Books. So that was um, 13 Reasons Why, Shipbreaker, which Shipbreaker also won the Michael Prince Award. Mm -hmm. And um, as we've talked before, Michael Prince was a librarian who was very, very um, uh, good when it came to picking out books for teens. And then Funny Little Monkey was also an ALA award. So um, boys and girls, I highly recommend those. And um, I want to thank you so much for coming today. Well, it's my to, pleasure. My well, pleasure. the Library Corner was much happier because we had you today. And I'm sure Augie is going to have lots of things <laughs> to tell me tonight. Um, so, boys and girls and everyone, we hope to see you next time on the Library Corner.